you haven't heard the news, my father has passed away, so thank you for your uh, prayers. Uh, a little bit unexpectedly, we didn't know if he'd pass six months, a year, six, uh, not that we're superstitious, my wife and I, uh, we were saying my, my dad had that tale of, you know, that nine lives kind of deal, you know, not that he loved cats either, not that, if you're cat lovers, God bless you anyhow, but anyway. <laughs> uh, my father was very comical like that, I mean, that's where I get it from, so, and another got two older brothers, one named Paul, and he's the same way, so he, he gets me. Hopefully you get me. Um, so obviously, uh, we, we're going to have a, uh, a celebration of life services. Uh, my father wanted it to be called, um, most likely be April 19th, just because there's so many dates, and there's youth convention at the main church at Faith Tabernacle. Uh, it's a Friday night, probably about 6.30, uh, pretty much kind of like what we did for Brother Stone on uh, an evening like that. But we'll get you more details on that once, you know, the funeral home, you know, lets us know when everything's ready. Um, so we appreciate your prayers, for, especially for my mother, family, thankful that he is in heaven, 76 years old. Um, not to say anything negatively, but, you know, the Bible talks about how the Lord is, is pleased when the saints so come to him in the book of Psalms in one way or another. That lets me to know, at least just for me, that, you know, God is pleased, you know, God is pleased and things are not just by chance. Um, was with him Sunday for Easter Sunday after uh, in the afternoon, so I'm uh, so thankful for that. Our last moments together, he was praying and speaking in tongues, as he always did in the last few months. Um, and so, uh, you know, you just, just never read it, never read it. But thankful, thankful, he, he's not asleep, he's alive. Uh, his soul is with the Lord Jesus. I'm thankful the Lord, after he died, after mm -hmm. he spent three days, three nights in Hades, which was paradise, mm -hmm. Old Testament, and, and hell, and preached to the captives. Uh, we don't need to go there. We, we immediately go with the Lord. And we don't know all the details, uh, but I am the man today for a lot of reasons, for different men and women of God, but mainly my father. And so we appreciate your prayers. Thank you so, so very much. Uh, please continue to pray for our family. Um, and, you know, we'll get through it. Grief is a different thing. It's, a, it's different for me. Uh, thankful he's in heaven with the Lord. But, man, that's a totally different feeling. But thanks be to God. He's in heaven. If you knew my father, he was a dancer. And uh, I think the last few years, maybe even a good decade, he couldn't. Um, and, of course, you know, when I was a kid, I was like, oh, that's my dad. And it's offering time for that testimony. Why is he dancing? And then, of course, I was about 22, 23 years old. And... Uh, almost lost him. God raised him up uh, from the dead, literally, and uh, got with me on that. And I was like, okay, from this point forward, it's uh, game on. And uh, he liked to make fun of people, and so he'd make fun of me a little bit. He, he, when he found out I was cold, he, he would tell everybody laughing, and he would say, he, he's, he don't even have his high school diploma yet. What are, you, are you sure, God? <laughs> that was how he is. And so I kind of mimic him, you know, dance, and then when the Holy Ghost hits me, well, I'm the 2.0 version, just a little bit faster. Amen. Praise God. So we'll pray for the nice Bible study. Thank you again. Uh, God is good. God is good. My father made it, and uh, yes. by the grace of God, we're all going to make it. Yeah. We're going to take our children. We're going to take our loved ones. We're going to save everybody. I, I do want to give a, a, an added testimony. My wife, uh, I, I mentioned about having prayer before service, uh, before uh, uh, school at Estes Elementary. And uh, the teacher came and they had prayer, her, Sister Missy, uh, and of course uh, the other teacher. And then there's other faculty in the admin that are saying, why don't we go to the poll in front of the school and pray before uh, school? And so God is opening these doors. Um, I know that all can participate for various reasons, but those that were able to, what it's been about a year, maybe two years ago, uh, actually we haven't been in Estes for two years like that, but uh, at least over a year, where we went and we prayed before that service and we walked it. Yeah. And uh, I remember personally going, you know, Brother Jacob Pugetta went and, and others and the, the Reyes family. Uh, so yeah, it's been a little bit, probably over a year. And we would pray over the doors. And I remember specifically saying, God, touch every teacher. You move, open doors. Mm -hmm. And so uh, now you see the Lord doing it and it's organic. And he does it. We follow, we plan, we organize and do a little bit before. But I, I mean, I'm just excited about that. I go all night. And so it's not us, 
It's the teachers that are not part of the church saying, could you pray and let's go to prayer. And I believe we're going to see a family saved. I believe we're going to see three souls added to the kingdom because of it. We're stepping out in faith, yep. hearing the spirit of God. And so I encourage you to keep on praying those prayers. Amen. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you, God, for every opportunity that we're able to be in your spirit, to hear your word of truth and strength, oh God. And we thank you for your spirit of and your word of hope, God, that we're thankful, Lord, that uh, that we don't need to mourn because of sadness and because of defeat. Uh, but there is always victory, Lord, whether we're here, present in body, is gained for the church, Lord, but being in your spirit is gained for us. We thank you, Lord, for my father's legacy. We thank you, God, that he came over and was a member of this local assembly here. We thank you, God, that he's with you. We're praying, Lord, that you give strength to my family and all the the loved ones. I'm asking God that you touch the lost loved ones that, that are not right with you, Lord, that have been discouraged or don't know you, that you give them a full understanding of who you are. And asking, Lord, that you anoint this Bible study, bless the children, asking God to touch our service of Miranda Sunday to Sunday, asking God that you do the work, continue to do the work at Estes Elementary for the teachers. Let nothing get in our way, Lord, even with the faculty. In Jesus' name, we praise you. Amen. I'm going to see tonight. Thank you. No piano All the saints and angels bow before your throne. And all the elders cast their crowns before the Lamb of God.
I guess they all fishermen were all on the lake and, yeah. and, and landed in different places, but they came from the other side. Again, it's phenomenal to, to, to understand where Jesus ministered. It was all around Galilee. Amazing. And I just read something today uh, it's in the Bible uh, how that Jesus wanted to stay away from Jewry. It said, stay away from Jewry. If you want to look it up, look up the word Jewry, it'll take you there. Uh, but yet he was in Galilee. So there must have been uh, Gentiles and Samaritans and Jewry in that in that area. Uh, and so he would he had to stay away from the Jewry because they're out to get him. Um, so Andrew was a, a follower of John the Baptist. Uh, and he was the first to call Jesus Messiah. I checked that out. He was the first apostle to call Jesus the Messiah. But if you remember Anna in the temple and Simon or Simeon in the temple, they proclaimed under the Spirit of God that Jesus was the Messiah. Even Mary was told by the angel that your son would be uh, the Lamb of God. So, but he was the first one, uh, to, and it says it right here in John 1. One of the two which heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. It doesn't say Simon Peter followed John the Baptist, but Andrew did. And he first findeth his own brother Simon and said unto him, We have found the Messiah, which is being interpreted the Christ. So, you know, he, he's kind of a first here. First one called by Jesus, first one to call him the Messiah, and so on. So, next uh, slide. Andrew, uh, I like this. And this is where I can get off into more of the pastoring, pre preaching kind of thing. Uh, he had some faith, and, and he had a good attitude. And I think we can learn our, uh, to put this in our lives. So, let's read the story here, John 6. When Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him, he saith unto Philip, Whence shall we buy bread that these may eat? And this he saith to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, very factually, Two hundred penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them, and that every one of them that may take a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, saith unto him, there is a lad which had five barley loaves and two small fishes, but what are they among so many? So the attitude of him was not looking at the negative and say how much it's going to cost and so on. It was to bring what he had to Jesus. And that's, you know, if we can apply that in our life and say, yeah. what you know, you can do anything, God. I'm going to bring what I have, my talents, my abilities to, to you, and you use them. Uh, so that's a really good attitude. It also was some faith because he didn't just walk away and say this is impossible or, or something. You know, something he he wanted to see what Jesus would do. Philip was about the money and how much it wouldn't work. So uh, just a little something from Andrew there. Uh, it's interesting that uh, the other place talking about uh, Andrew specifically was with Philip again. So maybe they were buddies. I don't I don't know, but just taking the two points and extrapolating a friendship. Um, in John, uh, it says, The same came therefore to Philip, which was of Bethsaida, of Galilee, and desired him, saying, Sir, we would see Jesus. These were some uh, Greeks that, that wanted to see Jesus. They wanted to, uh, you know, he, his, his fame went far, and they wanted to see him. So then Philip come, and he tells Andrew. And again, Andrew and Philip then went and told Jesus. So Philip went to Andrew, and maybe... Maybe Andrew was a strong person. We, we, we may get to see that uh, a little bit later. And Philip wasn't as strong or as, as powerful a, a apostle at the time. And so Philip went to Andrew and then they went to Jesus. Uh, there, is a, there is a place or two where Andrew was included with the John, James, and Peter and Andrew. So uh, he was almost in the inner circle. Um, now, Andrew... Let's see. The name means manly. So he might have been a, you know, kind of a strong, buff guy, uh, fisherman, a tough guy. I, I just didn't imagine that. I thought Andrew was, you know, meek and mild and so on. His name means manly. But to the church, later on, after uh, the church was formed, he, he was known as, he was called the first. And so they recognized that he was the first, like we have already shown, he was the first to be called, he was the first to say who's the Messiah. He was actually the first to be somewhat religious because he followed John the Baptist. Um, 
He was also uh, a fisherman, like so many of the apostles were. James and John, Peter and Andrew, maybe some others. I'm not the he was a tax uh, And each time the gospel, we've already seen it, each time the gospel refers to him as Peter's brother instead of the other way around. Uh, they never said Peter, the brother of Andrew. It was always Andrew, the brother of Peter. Uh, maybe he was the younger brother. Can't prove any, any of this really. It's hard to. Uh, maybe he was of lesser importance. Uh, therefore, uh, he was always referred to as the brother Peter, you know, the big guy. All right, and uh, so there's there's 14 times that he's mentioned. Four of them are in the list of the apostles. So that leaves only 10. And I brought out all of that I could from every everyone. Uh, squeezed it out from the Bible. I'm not going to add stuff from history and myths and legends and Christian traditions and so on. Uh, they're interesting, but because I don't know they're true, it's not, not uh, critical for us. Uh, so here's a little bit of extra biblical uh, on Andrew. He's reported to have been a missionary to Scythia, regions around the Black Sea and Acadia. And I put in a map here, very small for you guys, but Scythians are up here. It's almost getting up into uh, Russia, mm -hmm. and the Black Sea, and down here is Greece. So if he was maybe around this area here, that's another place that the apostles went. We've already seen them go to Persia, go to India, the coast of India, uh, down into Africa. And so Andrew went north. And that's what God sent the apostles to do. They were to carry on where he, didn't, he couldn't go, he didn't go in the flesh. So, I wonder what history is in those areas about Christianity. Are there any old Christians? Are there any uh, remnants of his missionary work from 2,000 years ago? So much to study. So much to study. I'm going to end this tonight just with a little glimpse of how much there is to study. All right, so let's go to uh, the next one, James. Not James, the son of Zebedee, the son of thunder, John and James. But James, what's called the less. He's only called the less once. In Christendom, he's called James the just. But that's not in the Bible. I couldn't find it anywhere. But I did find him called James the less. Um, Mark 15. There were also women looking on afar off, among whom was Mary Magdalene, and Mary the mother of James the less, and of Joseph and Salome. Okay, we talked about them. And... Uh, again, in studying James, I'm back to the same conundrum of whose father, whose brother, and it is so confusing. It's nothing that we need to know, but uh, it, the, the families are very, very confusing. Uh, so James the Less means uh, either younger or maybe, maybe smaller in stature. I didn't even think about that one, but uh, James uh, was called James the Less in one place. He is the son of Alphaeus. Matthew, Mark, and Luke all record this. Took one from Luke. Matthew and Thomas, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Simon called Zelotes in the list of uh, the apostles. So his father was Alphaeus, and again, that's where it gets kind of crazy because Alphaeus is also Cleophas. And Cleophas is married to Mary, but we're not sure if he was married to Mary of Mary and Joseph or another Mary. But if it was another Mary, then it was the sister of Mary. And that doesn't make sense because there'd be two Marys in the same family. So I'm, I'm kind of leaning towards. <coughs> no, no, I'm not leaning towards anything. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to get into this a little bit more. Uh, does this make James the brother of Matthew? Hmm. Because in Mark, we see as he passed by, he saw Levi, who was Matthew. The son of Alphaeus sitting at the receipt of custom and said unto him, Follow me, and he arose and followed him. Mm. So Matthew's father was Alphaeus. So is it the same Alphaeus? I don't know. Uh, it, again, why, why there's confusion is uh, we, we, we know that God inspired the Bible, so I don't ever say, Well, they made a mistake. I say, I need to figure out how it really worked. And if there isn't something there, then I just have to leave it. Mm -hmm. So, um, Good point. 
I don't think he's a brother of Matthew. Never ever in the Bible does it say the brothers Matthew and uh, James. Um, there's yeah, no accounts of Matthew and James being called brothers. James is the brother of Judas, not Iscariot, the other Judas. Now the other Judas, who's that? Well, we found out when we studied Thaddeus that Thaddeus was Judas, which was also a B, a B word, I forget the other one. Uh, so they, they had different names, as, as we sometimes also have different names we call. Uh, here's the two passages, that, and having two passages is good because it kind of even reinforces our, our, our knowledge. From Luke, it says, Judas, the brother of James, and Judas Iscariot, that's the other Judas, which was also the traitor. And then if you look in Jude, Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Christ, Jesus Christ and Paul. So Jude, Judas, or Thaddeus, and James were brothers. And uh, that's said a number of times. So now we've got three pairs of brothers. It was James and John, son of thunder, Andrew and Peter, we just did Andrew, and now James and Judas, or Thaddeus. Uh, and then, and maybe Matthew. Maybe there's, there's three something. I don't think so. Uh, keep going. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't end here. Uh, a few more things about James, and, and we'll go back into who, who is James. Uh, James was the head of the church at Jerusalem. We were talking before service tonight about uh, James the Less ended up being the bishop of Jerusalem. The, the bishop, uh, James Moore. They said, yeah, James Moore. And somebody, who would have said it, you get credit for it saying it, God can take the less and make it the head. Yeah. Yeah. That, who, who said that? Yeah. I don't know. Ah. Brother Shane said that. <laughs> Great point. Instant, instant, in season. Uh, so James the less became the James. And here's a couple places that we've read before, but uh, just to show that he was the head of the church. But he, beckoning unto them with a hand to hold their peace, declared unto them how the Lord had brought him out of prison. And he said, No show these things unto James and to the brethren. And he departed and went into another place. That was uh, Peter getting out of prison. Uh, prison. So, and then in Acts 15, when they were bringing Paul into the fold because Paul met with the Lord, was taught and began preaching, and then he went down to Jerusalem to meet with the apostles. Uh, when it was all talked about, after they held their peace, James answered, saying, Men and brethren, hearken unto me. So he gave the final, final opinion in that passage. Interesting to read 15. So James was the head of the church. Now, James of Sons of Thunder was beheaded in prison a little bit before this. So uh, there's some, some theories that uh, maybe we'll get to about what happened here. Uh, so James, was he the brother of the Lord Jesus after the flesh? Okay, was he a half-brother? Uh, Galatians 1.18, Then after three years I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter and abode with him fifteen days. But other of the apostles saw I not, saying, James, the Lord's brother. Interesting. He also was saying, other of the apostles except James. So this James was an apostle, and he's the Lord's brother in this passage, to understand that. Matthew uh, also says, is in this, in this passage, this was the time when Jesus was in uh, Nazareth again, is not... This, the carpenter's son, is not his mother called Mary, and his brethren, James, Joseph, Simeon, and Judas. Ah, now we put some things together here. Because here's James and Judas, brothers, which we saw in the listing of the apostles. James is the brother of Judas. So, were these brothers apostles? Or James? And if he was a brother of Jesus... Then he had clout, let's say, to be elected as the bishop of Jerusalem. He was a brother of Jesus. Now, it's interesting, next slide, James didn't initially believe Jesus, if this is the James. John 7, 5, for neither did his brethren believe in him. So 
Those four uh, didn't believe him. Jesus wasn't doing miracles there because of their unbelief. And his brothers didn't believe him. And James was part of that. But after the resurrection, he did. After the resurrection, he, he, he was on board. So perhaps, and this, this is interesting to find, it's because Jesus appeared unto James between the resurrection and the ascension during those, those uh, 40 days. Um, 1 Corinthians 15, 5, And that he was seen of Cephas, Peter, then of the twelve. After that he was seen of above 500 brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some are fallen asleep. After that he was seen of James, then all the apostles. Particularly the names James there. So maybe he, James really got on board after Jesus showed him. Remember, he did it for Thomas, he did it for Peter, he's done it for James. He gives us what we need to increase our faith, right. if we'll open our eyes. Um, here's some uh, James extra biblical. Uh, the story is that he was cast down, they threw him down with a rock embankment or something. And he didn't die, and then he was stoned to death there. Uh, and he, he supposedly got on his knees and he prayed forgiveness for the people that were stoning him. Uh, that's, they, they give that to everybody, so I'm not sure if it's true or not. This, again, is extra biblical. Um, and one other thing, if you happen to, to notice or heard of this, in 2002 there was an article published by Biblical Archaeology Review, which sometimes I, I pay the money to get that subscription. It's got interesting stuff in it, but uh, it was an article was about James, the James ossuary, ossuaries of stone written on, chiseled in, and uh, a line chiseled in this stone said, James, son of Joseph, brother of Jesus. And it was found out to be fraudulent. <laughs> so we'll wipe that out. But if you've ever heard of that, it had already related to James, who we're talking about tonight. So I so I threw it, throw it out there. Uh, but they, they said they they etched it in the same way that it was etched, and then they, they aged it with some kind of chemicals, and they found out. So it was taken out of the museum, and, and uh, I think they, they did something to the authors that, that tried to do that. Now, the last thing for tonight, uh, here's what I'm going to say about Judas Iscariot. That's it. I can talk about that guy. <laughs> If I, if I did get into it, it would take a lot longer than we want to be here tonight. Uh, we also don't talk about the devil, we don't talk about his henchmen. Right. Uh, Judas Iscariot was a person, and, and probably if I do another, another one, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about Judas Iscariot and to see what lessons we can learn, but uh, it's not for tonight. So the last thing I want to do is this uh, partial list of commentators, and I look at that partial list and I laugh at myself for saying partial. This is a tiny, little tiny sampling of the commentators from the first three, three to four hundred years after Christ. Um, as I've been studying, I've been seeing how much material they have commentating on the Gospels and on the lives of the Apostles. And You know, when we say they went here, they went there, that all comes from history. Things that they have found. Christianity took over the world and... Uh, lots of people wrote things that wasn't up under the inspiration of God. Lots of historians, lots of things we found. I'm sure the Vatican has tremendous amounts. Oh, I would just love to see what they have that they haven't released and won't release. But there's a lot of history and a lot of people. I just wrote some down here. Josephus, Oregon, Hedicus, uh, Here's one exposition of the sayings of the Lord of the Apostolic Father Papias of Hierapolis, who lived 70 to 160 AD, so contemporary with the Apostles. <clears throat> the Bishop of Salomon, uh, Salomus Epiphanius, fourth century letter pseudographically ascribed to the first century Clement of Rome in 73 AD. James was called the Bishop of Bishops, who rules Jerusalem, the Holy Church of the Hebrews, and all the churches everywhere. That's a quote from that. Um, then there was Jerome, uh, and according to Eusebius, he's got a lot of reading, you can read his books. Uh, James was named the Bishop of Jerusalem by the Apostles. This is just a, a tiny sampling, but what I want to leave you with today is, um, 
and we shouldn't ever be still questioning our faith and our Bible and so on. But it is backed up by millions, I would say millions over the course of 2,000 years, people studying and deciding what was in the Bible and what wasn't. And uh, everybody was fanatic. They were fanatical about Christianity. They died the martyrs. You can read about the martyrs. So when they, when they look at these, these documents, it's just further proof, uh, further uh, information that's not necessarily biblical, but information about uh, the church, its foundations, and, and uh, what the church did. So let that just be a, you know, an additional faith builder. We don't have to go, we didn't get this Bible written to us in the 1900s, and, and we're hoping that 2,000 years ago this was what it was. This has been down through centuries and, and literally millions of people who have, who have studied and uh, put their minds together and gave, gave us, uh, with God, God gave us his word through them. So that's it for tonight. Um, if we do, if we do uh, Judas Iscariot, um, you take a break. Yeah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Thank you. Yeah, it's uh, probably best not to talk about Judas or so, you know. It's going to be a quick lesson. Don't do what he did. Amen. You can definitely sell out. I appreciate that. And uh, we'll see you Sunday. And of course, next Thursday. And keep on going. Well, that's right. They got the youth convention, so we're going to have to pause that. But we'll see you Sunday. <laughs> yeah, so those that will be out there. All righty. We appreciate you. Thank you again.